Thank you for tuning in today at Propel Church. Whether you're watching through YouTube or listening through a podcast, we want to say thank you. Our hope at Propel is that you would be propelled into an authentic relationship with Jesus. From wherever you are tuning in, we hope that you are encouraged and inspired by this week's message. Hey, well, good morning, church. How are we doing? Anybody excited to be in church this morning? Come on. Oh my goodness, man, it's Father's Day. We got some hibachi we're gonna get going here. I bet y'all didn't know I was gonna feed you. Y'all hungry? Yeah, well, hey, hungry, I'm Matt Chirac, and uh, I got a couple of dad jokes. I store them in my, dad, my database up here, so if you think they're corny, you gotta laugh anyways, right? Pastor Nick forgot to tell you that part. Um, man, I am honored and privileged to be uh, the online campus pastor here at Propel Church, and so, um, I am very, very grateful for this opportunity to speak to dads today on Father's Day. I want to take just a minute uh, to honor those that have paved the way for me. My dad and my grandfather are watching somewhere in the United States right now. Um, I want to say happy Father's Day to them. Uh, And to you, dads that are here this morning, uh, happy Father's Day. Man, we're going to celebrate today, brothers, okay? We're going to have a good time in church this morning. Um, And our lead pastor and his beautiful and incredible wife, Tori, uh, Pastor Nick and Tori, I love y'all. Seriously, thank you so much for this opportunity, for your love and your care for this community. Man, it is just incredible to watch the way y'all partner to see people meet Jesus. I'm grateful for you. Thank you so much. I love y'all. Can we put it together for our lead pastor and and his incredible wife, Tori? Yeah. So uh, I, wanna, I wanna connect with everybody this morning. So what I've got is I've actually got a picture we're gonna throw up here. Behind me is a picture of me and my family. And uh, so this is us at Stone Mountain. And that's my beautiful wife, wife over here with the Under Armour hat, even though she's shorter than my daughter, Erin. Don't worry about that. Um, we actually just got married on May 1st. We were, we were gonna get married at the library, but they were all booked up. That's the last one, I promise. I swear, last one, last one. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's my beautiful wife. She's incredible. I'm very grateful for her. Um, and then that's my son, Colton, to her left. He's four. He's a little me. Uh, so sometimes I could just pun him, right? You ever argue with yourself? Like it is the most, ag- my, my mom and dad are laughing somewhere because they think it's funny that it came around. Like they know what it's like to argue with me. And uh, that's my daughter, Erin, uh, to my right. And she is eight going on 18. I don't know if any of y'all know what that's like, but y'all pray for me. And so I wanted to share this picture with you. One, because it's at Stone Mountain. We're gonna talk about Stone Mountain a little later in the message. But two, I wanted to connect with you this morning. Uh, Dads, I just want you to know, man, I don't have this thing all figured out. I'm not standing on this platform today to preach at you and to tell you that I'm an expert at this. In fact, I wanna come up here and encourage you and I wanna stand alongside with you and come beside you today and let you know that there's a God in heaven who loves you and that together we can accomplish some incredible things for our kids, amen? All right. So we're gonna lean in today, man. I think, um, I think I don't know all of you individually, dads, I, but I do know a couple of things about us collectively of dads, some, some cliche things. I know that when we answer the phone, we love to say, yellow, and y'all do that. We answer the phone like that. I know when I go to a different town or a different city, and you can ask my wife and kids, I like to comment on the gas prices, like as soon as we get into town, talk about what the gas prices is. Whenever I break something, dads, I don't know if you do this, break something and then you say, yeah, they they sure don't make these things like they used to, (laughs) like it's somebody else's fault, right? Um, I know that for my kids, I know that for your kids, that we, that you would do literally anything. I know that you wanna be a great dad. I know that you drive halfway across the country to see baseball games and softball games and cheerleading events. I know that you drive halfway across the country to take your kids to college and visit them. I know that you don't always make the amount of phone calls and texts you should for your kids that are older. But what I do believe is that deep down inside of us that we do want to change the world for our kids to live in a better place, right? Right. And sometimes, sometimes it's really difficult. Sometimes I feel like I'm just stumbling through this leadership thing. I'm stumbling through this dad thing. And man, I just, I feel like confused sometimes, conflicted maybe. I'm not really sure what my kids need. Or, you know, even if I did understand what in the world my kids need, I have no idea how to get them there. And so I'm going to make kind of a a statement here. I'm going to explain it. How about this? I'm going to tell you that what I believe our kids need is not 
health, wellness, or happiness, our kids need Jesus. And what I, what I mean by that, don't give me the wrong way, our kids, you know, we want them to be healthy, we want them to be wealthy, and we want them to have happiness. But ultimately, I believe if you chase Jesus as much as you chase the things you think you want, that you'll have everything you need and more. And so if we can show our kids that, if that can be our target, if that can be our goal, then we can win the race. And we can see our kids step into everything that an incredible dad or an incredible father in heaven, an incredible God has for them. So my per- first point for us this morning, if you're taking notes, is dads, our goal is no longer money, power, or fame, it's to know Jesus. There's no longer money, power, or fame, it's to know Jesus. I think for me, sometimes I have the wrong goal. I don't know about you, but I think sometimes I struggle because I'm aiming at the wrong target. Like when I think about the things that my kids need, when I think about where they're at in life, sometimes I get a little too logical. I get a little too task oriented. When in reality, if I would just work through my identity and allow my kids to grasp that and see that, that they would benefit from it. So I think in here in this morning, maybe there's some of us that are are currently struggling with that foundation and currently struggling with, hey, I'm not really sure who I am in Christ. Or maybe this morning you're in here and Father's Day is a tough day for you because uh, you you never really had a dad. Or maybe maybe your dad is, is no longer around. Man, can I just tell you that we have a father in heaven who loves you. There's a God in heaven who cares for you. And he doesn't base his love for us on your efforts. It's grace. He loves us and he loves you. I was watching this movie the other day and it's called Full Count. It's a Christian movie or a kingdom movie is what I would call it. And there's these two sons and they're fighting for their, each of their dad's love and affection. And as they fight through this battle and this struggle, they start to make really poor decisions because they don't grasp and understand the love of their father. It leads them into drug abuse. It leads them into physical altercations, school suspensions. One of them even gets kicked off the baseball team. And as the movie comes full circle, the dags actually come to the realization that they've put this pressure on their sons because they didn't understand the grace that they get from God. And as they received that, they were able to give it to their kids. Because you and I, we can't, we can't give what we don't have. So we have to understand who we are in Jesus. We have to understand that through Jesus, we have access to God, that he loves us, that he cares for us, that regardless of where you've been, what you've done, or how, fall, or how much you've stumbled through this thing, that he's there for you and he wants to come alongside with you on this journey. And so as these dads come to this realization, their kids finally grasp it. And we see that for one of them, it ends up being he gets drafted and goes into the MLB and becomes this incredible pitcher. And it's this awesome moment where I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I cried. His dad was like, I'm so proud of you, son. I love you. And it was awesome. And I cried a little bit and teared up a little bit because I think it just, it really resonated with me. I think sometimes we get so focused on these goals that we want for our kids. But if we would just focus on showing them Jesus, everything would come with the picture. Amen. And so, I got this scripture here, it's Ephesians 2, eight through 10. It says that for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I love this scripture because number one, it tells me, it reminds me of humility. It says, hey, this is, this is by God's grace that I've been saved through faith. So it's, it's, it's simple, but it's hard, I know that. It's the simple receiving of, hey, there is this grace, there is this salvation, I accept it. And it's not because of my efforts, it's not because I'm awesome, it's just because we, we get to accept this gift and this grace. But also because, dads, I know sometimes we feel a little bit of pressure as we're leading through this thing, right? You ever feel like, you know, as you're searching for the answers and you're really not sure if you're on the right path. Well, God reassures us right here in this scripture. He says that created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. So I wrote it in my notes like this, that God is faithful to prepare us for what he's already preparing for us. 
So once we, once we accept the fact that Jesus is here for us and we know our identity and we know our foundation is built on him, we don't have to feel the pressure of what to do next because God's faithful. He's gonna carry us through that. He's gonna show us how to parent our kids. He's gonna show us through prayer and intimate time spent with him and through knowing him, how we do this thing and how we run this race. I love it. That God is faithful to prepare us for what he has already prepared for us. And it's vital that like, I've learned this with my kids. Y'all ever talk to your kids till they're blue in the, you're blue in the face? Anybody ever do that? Like you're like, I, do I need to say it in a different language? Are they teaching you a different language at school? Y'all, I love teachers. Thank, I had to spend a lot of time with my kids last year. I love y'all so much. <laughs> uh, and man, here's, here's what I've learned is that uh, they see, like monkey see, monkey do, okay? So, so our kids are better imitators than they are listeners. So with, with our kids, more is caught than taught. With our kids, more is caught than taught. And what I mean by that is dads and parents all around the room, you don't have to start discipling your kids, you already are. Like they're, they're watching you, they're seeing what you do. They're, they're checking you out. We, uh, we like to sit down at night at bedtime, uh, my wife and I, and the kids, and, and we read out of this children's uh, kids book that actually we got right here from Propel Church. And we were reading the story of Mary and Martha the other night, and it's the story of these two women, and Jesus is on his way to their house, and um, Martha is super stressed out, and she's got to get all the things ready, right? She's got to have like the perfect dip and the cookies, and the house has got to be spotless, and all of these things that are going on. And Jesus arrives, and Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet, and she's laser, she's locked on Jesus, y'all. She's focused on Jesus, and Martha's still running around, and she's like, "Hey, Jesus, shouldn't Mary be helping me?" And Jesus looks at her and he says, "Martha, Martha, you're focused and concerned with all these things, but Mary is concerned with the thing that matters." And so we get to this point. And my daughter's got like this look on her face. Like, she's like, what in the world are you talking about, dad? (laughs) Like, she's just, she's not grasping at all. And so I tried to explain it to her and she wasn't really getting it. I was like, okay, I'm I'm gonna show her. And so something my wife and I do is we fight really hard for our Sabbath day. We fight really, really hard for a rest day. And there's a lot of things going on in this season, y'all. Let me just tell you, like there's things to be done, but on our Sabbath day, we stop, we delight, we praise in God. That's a whole nother message. But my whole point is when we get there, Aaron sees that. Like she understands, hey, there's a lot of other things that we could be focused on right now. There's all kinds of chores that we could be doing around the house. But now my daughter gets to watch us take a day to focus on Jesus, to stop and to praise God in that moment because she catches more than I can teach her. She's learning from the things that she sees us do. I think this pressure that we feel sometimes as spiritual leaders of the household also comes from uh, a competitive nature. Men that we have sometimes, anybody competitive in here? A little prideful, wanna be the best. Um, I think sometimes I have this expectation that I'm gonna be this perfect spiritual leader. But what I've learned on this journey is that my kids don't need a perfect spiritual leader. Like they don't need an expert, they need a guide. They need somebody that's gonna guide them towards the things of Jesus. They need somebody that's gonna guide them towards the things that God is already doing. I love that uh, Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9, the scripture says that these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk to them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. That means everywhere, right? So everywhere we go. He says, uh, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. That's Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9. And just a little background on this scripture. So this is in the Old Testament and the Israelites have been struggling. Like God keeps rescuing and redeeming them and they keep turning and going the wrong way. They keeps rescuing and redeeming. It's this really like repetitive thing. It keeps happening over and over again. So God's like, hey, Write it on your forehead, symbolism. Bind it to your hands. Talk about it everywhere you go. Don't forget me. Remember me. Remember who I am. Remember what I've done. And you and I don't have to create that. God's already created that. We just have to guide our kids to that. 
We just have to help them remember who God is and what he's doing. At my house, we have two jars because one's already full, which is amazing. These two jars, we sit on top of our fireplace. They're up on the mantle and pretty much daily, not every day because we're not perfect, but we try. We take time to sit down and say, hey, where did you see God today? And on top of this mantle, there's a couple pens and some notepads. And what we do is we write down the things that we saw God do that day. And we invite the kids into it, Aaron and Colton, and we talk to them. And y'all, you ask God, you ask your kids where they saw God, you're gonna get some wild answers from a four-year-old. Let me just tell you, like he says some things that are off the wall sometimes. But the thing I love about it is it doesn't have to be like these huge, supernatural, miraculous, you know, events. It can be even in the small things, right? So, so I think the other day I wrote down that I had a delicious piece of cheesecake. Come on, amen. I saw God in cheesecake. <laughs> Um, you know, I think, you know, it, it may be like an encouraging word from uh, my pastor. It may be, um, you, know, uh, you know, a kiss on the forehead from, from your wife. It, it may be that you saw God miraculously heal your grandmother who's been in the, the hospital for three weeks, right? It may be this huge financial burden that you were carrying that you saw God come to. But what we do is we make sure that we don't miss it. And when it happens, we are intentional about sitting down and saying, hey, this is where I saw God today. And now my daughter who's eight, she got the memory of an elephant, y'all. She don't forget anything. So if I forget, she now comes and disciples me. She says, hey, dad, guess where I saw, guess where I saw God today? And I'm like, come on, Jesus, that's what I'm talking about. Where'd you see God today? And she's like, I saw this fox on the side of the road and it reminded me of God. I'm like, amen, she's getting it, she's getting it, right? because she's seeing. So I help, we, we have to create these, these symbols, these, these ways of just reminding our kids, hey man, there's this, this God, this creator, he's, he's all around us and he's here. And we don't, we don't have to create all of these things. God is already doing all of these things. We just have to guide them to him. And we don't have to be complete and total experts of the Bible. Man, I'm here to tell you, I don't know every single scripture. There's books in the Bible that I really don't even like to read, if I'm honest with you. It happens. But man, I just, I just keep guiding, just keep guiding. Even though I'm stumbling, I just keep guiding the kids back. And so I think another important thing about speaking of guides, um, I'm actually not gonna talk about fly fishing guides, Pastor Nick. Because uh, <laughs> I, felt, I felt in my spirit, that's where, that's where he thought I was going with this. I'm actually gonna talk about how uh, good guides slow down. Great guides, they, they slow down enough to see what God is doing around them. And so back to, you know, earlier you saw the picture of my family and I, we were at Stone Mountain and Stone Mountain's about an hour and 45 minutes from here. And I love hiking um, because my wife loves hiking, but I also love hiking because I get to fly fish afterwards. And so um, I really love fly fishing. <laughs> and uh, so we go as a family, we go hiking and we hang out and um, we're, we're on this journey together and we're, we're focused on getting to the top, right? There is this goal. This goal is to get to the mountain peak. But as we're doing that, we're, we're not in a rush. One, because we have a four-year-old and eight-year-old with us. And I know that that's just gonna create this tension inside of me, right? I'm gonna get frustrated. But two, because we wanna make sure that we enjoy God's creation while we're hiking because that's kind of the point of it for us. And so as we're doing it, um, doing this hiking thing, we see, these craters. Stone Mountain is a granite top mountain. It has like these craters. It kind of looks like the surface of the moon. And there's puddles because it rained the night before. There's puddles all over the place. And my four-year-old is having a ball. Colt man is running and jumping in every single puddle. He ain't missed one all the way up the four mile mountain. He's going to hit every single one. And I'm like celebrating with him. It's this great time. We come up to this really big puddle up near the peak. And when we get there, Colton's like, ew. I'm like, what is this? I walk over there and there's like this slimy string of something in the puddle. And of course my daughter's got 8,000 questions because she's very inquisitive. And I'm like, all right, little G, hook me up. <laughs> I'm trying to Google and figure out what we've got going on here. And so I pull out Google and I see that uh, this is actually frog eggs. And because we slowed down and we were able to see this and not walk right by it, I had this incredible opportunity in this moment to stop and to share with my daughter, where I was like, hey, Aaron, check this out. These are frog eggs. So, so let me just tell you, the same God who created this mountain is the same God who created the clouds and the clouds that carry water and the rain, the rain downs onto the mountain. And here there's this 
crater that God has created and the water flows into this puddle in which a frog that he created jumps into the puddle, lays its eggs. Now tadpoles are born and they become adult frogs so that they could do it all over again. How amazing is our creator? How incredible is God? And so it was only because I wasn't sprinting up the mountain and had the opportunity to slow down with our kids and show them that I was able to remind them that there is a God who is ever present and he's here. I'm able to show them Jesus right there on that mountaintop. I believe that you and I can guide our kids to Jesus like that and slow down in all kinds of areas of our life. Man, I get so locked on to the task of whatever it is that I completely miss the why sometimes. I don't know about you, but I do it, I do it at work. I do it at home. I mean, I did it yesterday. Like literally yesterday, I'm so grateful for my father-in-law. He was, he was there with me. I was trying to hang a TV and my kids kept fighting with each other because that's what kids do. And they came in, I was like, y'all, I'm about to have a come apart if y'all don't stop fighting tonight. <laughs> and fortunately, my father-in-law Gary stepped in and he, he helped out and he handled things much better than I did. <laughs> And it's because I was so focused on the task that I missed the opportunity to share Jesus. And so good gods, great gods, we slow down to share Jesus. Y'all, this next point uh, is gonna be awesome because this is an ongoing joke that we have around the office. It's not a joke, it's a serious thing, but we've been, we've just been having, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna say the word, I'm just gonna tell you, make it fun. Man, make it fun. I've been, I've been running around the office all week saying, make it fun. <laughs> Our worship directors are around here somewhere and I just randomly come up to them. I'm like, make it fun, Noah. <laughs> and we, we're, man, we're putting hands in and we're making it fun and we're one, two, three. We're, we, we've been kind of tossing around this message that uh, our pastor shared with us last week in a leader growth channel that it's all about like having fun and just enjoying the process and making life fun. So dads, I, I just, this morning, can I just tell you, brother, put your big boy pants on and put your happy face on. Put your fun face on. Come on, man, we, this is fun. We have the opportunity to have a ton of fun with our kids. Man, build that fort, make those s'mores, go jump in the mud, go play in the rain. Man, stop what you're doing and go hang out with your kids. Go play Barbie dolls. Man, have fun with it. Laughter is a medicine. Man, you ever, you ever had like a great laugh with somebody and immediately afterwards they're like, ah, I really needed that, yeah. right? I mean, laughter is a medicine. Fun is so incredibly adventurous too. Like, I don't know where you're currently standing, but whenever I go on an adventure, if I'm laughing and having fun the whole time I'm doing it, it's a much better adventure and it's a much better process. And what I've learned with our kids is that, man, they are very adventurous. Anything to Colton, our four-year-old, is, is like this incredible opportunity for adventure. Like this brother has never seen a regular stick. I promise you, like what we see is a tree or a stick. What Colton sees is the opportunity for reindeer horns. And so when he finds, it's not just any stick, it's the right stick. And when he sees it, it's got this little Y and he's got to grab it and he's going to run around the yard and daddy, I got reindeer. And I pick up one with him and you're at, yeah, we fight sticks and smack trees. And man, it's so much fun to be a part of that adventure. And I'm, I'm actually learning from my kids. I'm actually learning how to be adventurous again from my kids. I don't think that you and I as adults, any of us in this room have lost a spirit or desire for adventure. I just I think sometimes we chase adventure in the wrong places. And I think when we do that, it's not fulfilling. And because of that, we become bored. And boredom is dangerous. Now, it's dangerous for everybody, but men in particular, when we get bored, we do some stupid stuff. <laughs> we really do. We do some silly stuff. And so uh, this adventure that we have an opportunity to be on with our kids, man, it's, it's fun. It's incredibly fun. I think that there's some stories in the Bible. There's a couple of characters I just want to talk about. Um, a couple of them in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And they, they had the opportunity to say yes to Jesus and to know, or to say yes to God and to know him and to follow him and follow his path. And, and as they did, they, they didn't encar- encounter very much boredom. Let's, let's talk about him real quick. We got this guy named Abraham. Abraham was told to pick up his things and move to unknown lands. And then at 100 years old, they had a baby. <laughs> Can y'all imagine a <laughs> hundred years old having a baby? That doesn't sound boring to me. <laughs> There's a guy named Moses and Moses is a part of the Israelites getting out of Egypt and 
Moses says yes to God as well, and he joins this adventure with God. And because he does that, he gets to see seas part. He gets to see food miraculous, miraculously appear. He gets to encounter God in a burning bush. We have this guy named Peter, and Peter met Jesus on the shores, and Jesus was like, hey, join my ministry. Come join the adventure. And Peter says, yes, Peter eventually walks on water. Man, we have this guy named Paul who used to be Saul, but God literally knocked him down and then helped him back up, of course. And he changes his name. His name becomes Paul. And Paul is this catalyst in the new church, in the way is what they call it. And he ends up writing, I think, 13 books in the New Testament. And so there's these men in the Bible that have said yes to God And none of this sounds boring to me. I don't know about you, but this sounds pretty adventurous. It sounds pretty dangerous. Any guys out there like to get dangerous? Come on. Look, I see y'all looking at your wife. You're like, yeah, baby, I'm dangerous. (laughs) I'm dangerous up in here. Man, I I think for you and I, we have to remember that God has invited us into the greatest adventure that the world has ever known. This is a rescue mission for the world. And for some reason, God gives you and I the opportunity to play a role in it. Not just at home with our kids, but out in our communities as well. He he chooses for you and I to be a part of it. The God of the entire universe, y'all, is enlisting us to play a role in bringing chunks of heaven down to earth. I think if we could just take a moment to wrap our minds around that and what that looks like for our kids, what that looks like for our families, what that looks like for our communities, it would be kind of hard to be bored. It's kind of hard not to have fun with an adventure like that. I love what Acts chapter two, verse 24 through 28 says. It says, but God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life. This is where we get wild right here, church. For death could not keep him in its grips. King David said this about him. I see that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praise. My body rests in hope for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. You will fill me with the joy of your presence. You have shown me the way of life. We talked about earlier, like this pressure that we carry. I mean, you're not alone in that. I I feel it. Which direction do we go? Are we on the right path? I love God's word because it's, it's comforting. It reminds me that he's there. He's, he's showing us the way of life. And, and because we're on this adventure with God and with our families and, and we're sh- being shown the way of life, we get, we get his presence. And in his presence, there is joy. There is always joy in Jesus regardless of your circumstances, regardless of where you're at, man, you can, you can put that smile on. You can make it fun. You can enjoy his presence in the process. You can enjoy the things that we get to do as dads. And I know it's hard, but it's a promise. And it's right here in God's word. That it's the joy of his presence. There's a translation that I don't read from very often. Uh, it's called the Passion Translation. And there's a scripture I read the other day. And I was like, man, this is, this is one of the most lit scriptures I've read in a long time. It says, your enthusiasm is contagious and it has stirred many of them to do likewise. Man, <laughs> passion is contagious. Enthusiasm is contagious. If we can get off the task, if we can focus on Jesus and we can have fun and have joy and enthusiasm in this, in this adventure that we're all on together, man, it is contagious. Like your kids want to be a part of that. You ever seen somebody like on a football team or maybe a team that you coach, it's a player, or maybe at work, and just everything this day is going wrong. Like things just, they're just not going right. You just can't seem to go the wrong direction, but there's that one person who's got joy. There's this one person who's, who's smiling and who's staying positive. And you see that person and you're like, man, that's attractive. 
Like, I, I, I want that. I want what they have. Man, passion is contagious. Enthusiasm is contagious. Let's be that for our kids. Let's be that for our communities. Let's do that. I wonder what it would look like, church, for us to wake up every day and say, man, I can't wait to see how God will use me today. I can't wait to see what fun things God has in store for me today. A few years ago, I walked through a divorce and I had to move out and was going through some, some stuff and I knew Jesus and I was trying to put my fun face on. But y'all, it was, it was tough. And in these moments, I had some people that I had reached out to going through all of this and uh, my buddy, Mike Moore, who's also a dad and Pastor Nick. And, and I, I just remember calling him and being like, hey, I, I, I'm really struggling today. I'm confused, I'm, I'm hurting, I'm not sure which direction to go. And whenever I would call them, they would, they would do this thing where they would encourage me and they would talk me up and they would, they would remind me who God is and they would remind me of scripture and they would point me back to his promises. And man, I, I just, the last thing I have for, for us this morning is don't do it alone. Don't, don't do this thing alone. Guys, if you would, if you're a dad in the room, would you just raise your hand for me? On, online, if you're online, throw something in the chat. And dads, if you'll just look around, if you'll just keep your hands raised for just a second. Dads, if you'll look around the room right now, there's hands all across this room. Man, we're not alone. <laughs> These are the brothers right here in this room and with us online. And we can come beside each other and we could do this thing together because we're gonna need each other. We're gonna need to lean on each other. The thing about stumbling through leadership is stumbling only hurts if you fall. But if there's somebody next to you to catch you, then you never hit the ground. And so I encourage you today to be a part of the family, to be a part of the brotherhood, to join the kingdom, to say yes to this adventure, to say yes to Jesus, to give your kids what they need and to show them what an amazing and incredible life is like with Jesus. And scripture tells us dads that in James verse, or chapter five, verse 16, that if we confess our sins to each other and pray for each other, it produces wonderful results that there's healing in this prayer as we need each other. I, I needed Mike, I needed Pastor Nick, I needed people, I need them right now today to make it through this. I need to be able to call these people and lay what God, and just confess the things that, hey, you know what, today I, I snapped. I, I, was, I was stressed out, had a lot going on and, and the kids were arguing and, and I raised my voice and I yelled at them. Hey man, I love you. Sometimes I do that too. I apologize to your kids, they'll forgive you. Man, we need that, we need that healing. Brother, I invite you into that healing this morning. I invite you to join this family. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's you this morning, if you're, if you're ready to say yes, if you're ready to take that step, would you just boldly raise your hand? And we don't, we don't pray alone, church, so I'm gonna, ask, I'm gonna ask that everybody repeat this prayer with me. We say, dear Jesus, today I give you my life. I place my hope and trust in you. Thank you for dying in my place so that I can have new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for checking out this week's message. If you made any decisions for Jesus or you need a next step or have a prayer request, let us know by going to www.propel.church hub. That leads you to our digital connect card where you can fill out all of that information as well as see what we have coming up here at Propel. Thank you again for tuning in and we hope to see you again soon.